Do you think if I bought my crush a B580, she'd go out on a date with me? Let's talk about it. The B580 slays, okay? The B580 is the new budget GPU. Intel single-handedly just saved budget gamers. I mean, look how far we've come in just a couple of years with driver's updates, guys. You gotta give it to Intel. I mean, we went from black screens, all kinds of issues like textures disappearing to honestly a GPU that delivers drivers that are basically on par with AMD from a couple of years ago. I think AMD's drivers are still a little bit better, but honestly, it's not bad. I think a lot of the issues we were seeing with Arc in the last couple months were actually due to its hardware. And Battle Mage seems to have fixed a lot of the hardware issues with Alchemist or first gen Arc. The $250 price range of the B580 saves budget gamers. We have been rescued from our just life of life of nothing. We've been on the used market. We were probably rocking GTX cards and we had nothing. What could ruin this glorious day of Battle Mage being launched and us getting this budget card that will cement itself into all builds under $600? Well, a lot actually. Um, I actually broke my silicon wafer today. I was setting this silicon wafer up for um, a showcase. Silicon wafer broke into many little pieces. So yeah, I guess you could say I have the real broken silicon now and it still looks glorious, don't get me wrong, but definitely, definitely pretty saddening there. And also my dog of 16 years died today, so you know, I know you didn't ask, you probably don't care. So whatever, we're moving on to Battle Mage. I wanna go with this GPU if you're building new and it's gonna rock. I mean, XES, XESS, giving you upscaling up to 20, 30% more performance just on your base resolution. It looks better than native probably. Uh, I heard that around the block. And then also frame gen, you know, um, they're frame gen. They were getting like more than double FPS from frame gen, which is kind of weird. We're gonna have to test that out on my A770 and see how that works. You know, we started this channel and I just started doing some leaks here and there, which don't worry, I do a lot of talking head now. I'll still do leaks when they come out and they're important. But you know, I came out with performance estimates for Battle Mage and I put the B580 right around a 6750 XT. You know, just did the math, XC cores, IPC gain, frequency gain and I said around 6750 XT at the limit maximum limit and it looks like that's exactly where this card is landing so I don't want to toot my own horn or anything but I'm just saying if you're listening to this one guy that says Intel Arc is canceled maybe unsubscribe from that guy and subscribe to me which I have a pretty good record when it comes to leaking stuff and its performance I guess not at leaking but estimating performance numbers if you want to get accurate performance estimates just come over to Silicon Stake and I'll hook you up for sure I'm just gonna be playing with like PC parts in this video. I don't know why. I really, really want them to come out with the B770. In my last video, I basically said, it doesn't look like they're gonna come out with a B770 based on a lot of the things um, we're just hearing in their tone and their wordage and their verbiage with this arc trailer. You know, just saying like, oh, this S this battle arc battle mage is up to 12 gigabytes of VRAM. We have, um, what is it called? A limited edition for the B580, not a B770. We aren't saving that. Like just kind of weird stuff like that. And um, I, I listened to the podcast on The Fool Nerd with Tom Peterson. And when they asked him about the B770, he's like, I cannot comment on that. You know, we are not talking about that at all. So either they're really trying to keep this under wraps and trying to surprise NVIDIA and AMD, or it's really just not coming, which let's just be real boys. Intel just saved budget gamers. Intel just saved the low end of PC gaming. It was going in a horrible direction. We were just recommending consoles and you know, it was looking kind of grim for you budget gamers with eight gigs of VRAM and stuttering and all kinds of garbage. Now we have 12 gigabit, 12 gigabyte VRAM GPU. There's no reason to buy um, any other graphics card than the B580 at anything under $300. Be Let's just be real. Anything new that's under $300, you're buying the B580 now. You have dual media encoders. You guys don't know what that means. Basically, it, when you export a video, it does it twice as fast if your um, software supports it because you're able to double pump your media through both encode and ex and um, encode and decode at the same time. So it's like bada bing, bada boom, super fast exports. I can export a 10 minute um, video on my 4090 that's 4K 
with AV1 um, decoding and encoding in like literally just a minute or two. It's really fast, but or I have a 4080, whatever. So yeah, I mean, the A580 is a W, boys. We just got, Intel finally got a W. Let's just give a hand to Intel. They really needed this W. They really needed this win. Their company is kind of on the brink right now. Their sentiment is at all time low. Although I'm kind of seeing a shift in their graphics card mind share. Really guys, in the comment sections, not only on here on Silicon Stake and Hardware Unbox, everywhere on all these different channels, even Moore's Law's dead channel. I'm seeing people saying, let's go ARC. Like I'm excited about this product. It reminds me of how people's sentiment were at the beginning of Ryzen's launch. There's a lot of people still skeptical of Ryzen, but we it started to get kind of like a fanboy base, which I'm just gonna say, it looks like Intel Arc is getting kind of fanboyish right now. I'm not partaking in the fanboyism, but I do admire the hardware in the card. 12 gigabytes of VRAM, enough mem memory bandwidth to feed the beast, dual encoders, and they fixed idle power. Um, who was talking about it? Wendell was talking about idle power. We get like eight to 11 watts of idle power on the B580 now, way better than my 40 watts on the A770. So honestly, guys, I'm probably going to trade my A770 out for that B580 at some point, um, unless they come out with a higher end SKU and then I might get that instead. You'll have to stay tuned for A770 and B580 testing. I'll probably get to that pretty soon. So yeah, if you have a card like this, this is an RTX card. It's a 2060. Uh, it's got six gigs of VRAM. Sure, you're gonna have DLSS and all this, but you're gonna be crippled by this card. A B580 might be a pretty good upgrade for you if you wanted to, you know, dabble in some content creation and some a little, uh, you know, actually high texture gaming. Yeah. Bet you guys didn't know I played guitar, but yeah, I play a little bit of guitar. Just sit back and relax in this video. I need something to help ease my mental state of mind right now. Like I said, really bad day, but it's not gonna stop me from making a video on Intel Arc, guys. It's funny, dude, this thing claps AMD and ray tracing. Actually, it claps AMD across the board. I was seeing some instances where this thing is faster or as fast as a 7700 XT, which is kind of crazy to see. That is. To be fair, that is a minority and that's not something that's usually going on. Um, something I didn't get to see a lot of testing on today that I really did want to is Unreal Engine 5 testing with this GPU. I could be wrong, but I didn't see it in a lot of the benchmarks. I wanna see this thing tested in new Unreal Engine 5 games. The games were ARG bottom frags because Battle Mage may actually be on par with you know like a 4060 in these Unreal Engine 5 games. And if that's the case, really the performance of Battle Mage in the B580 has leveled out to a degree where like we all just need to recommend it, boys. Like $250, 12 gigs of VRAM, enough memory bandwidth to feed the beast, dual media encoders. The value you're getting out of this card is really equal to something like $400 that we have today at the bare minimum. Um, AMD offers, you know, the 7700 XT that has more raster performance, sure, it has more memory bandwidth, but it doesn't have those beast media encoders and it doesn't have the AI hardware acceleration support like Intel Arc does. So. It doesn't look like they want to announce a B770 right now. I'm not saying it's not coming out. That's the vibe I'm getting that they don't want to come out with this card, but they may just be playing a low ball, sandbagging, if you will. I don't believe they are. Um, just waiting for Nvidia and AMD to release their mid and mid range SKUs to see what the competition is like. I can understand them kind of wanting, wanting to hold off on something like that if it's going to be really expensive. And, you know, with tariffs coming in, they probably don't want to uh, overburden themselves with a graphics card that is way too expensive and no one wants to buy. Battle Mage. Encode this, Battle Mage. NVIDIA and AMD need to watch out, all right? They're starting to take some of their profit money in that zone. I think if we got a B770 at 47 to 70 performance level with 16 gigs of VRAM, they could, it would sell like gangbusters at around $400. Even if they wanted to meme out and go $420, I think it would sell like gangbusters, guys. It would go crazy. So yeah, you know, Battle Mage came out and it wrecked, you know, my dog is still dead and the silicon wafer is still broken, but you know, I'll probably pick up a B580 to ease the pain and maybe I'll get my crush a B580 and maybe she'll actually go out with me. Things could perk up in my life a little bit, but yes. What do you think of the B580? 
Are you going to pick it up? I mean, 6700 XT performance with actually, de with actually, you know, AI cores that work and great media encoding performance. Guys, this thing is looking good, man. Nvidia should be scared. If, if Intel is able to get this level of performance and fluidity at the low end, I'm just kind of wondering like, what's their data center GPU is gonna be looking like in a couple years? If they can keep this up, maybe they can actually dip into the AI space just a little bit. It's all gonna come down to the software stack and let's be real, Intel's gonna have that advantage over AMD in that space. Are you an ARC enthusiast or are you an AMD fanboy? Let me know in the comment section down below. Silicon Steak signing out. When he drops his taste, the haters stand still. Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny. Silicon Steak's truth cuts through the lie.